Folks, we made it to the end of another successful election integrity conference. <laughs> Me and my mentor want to say a few parting words. We also want to encourage everyone to stick around and talk with um, our um, speakers. We're all going to be here till, uh, we'll, some of us will be here till 8 o'clock. We've got the room till then. And then we're going to kick you out. Um, but um, I want to thank you all for being here. Eight hours, two days, in the heat. Next year, we promise air conditioning. <laughs> I want to thank you for being part of this vision. Looking forward, we are looking for big ideas. Um, I am a member of the Richmond Progressive Alliance. We are, we are, we're the little engine that could. Richmond, California, we now have five out of seven city council um, seats from corporate free candidates. I want to say that again. Corporate free candidates. We won three out of those seven seats in 2014 when Bernie Sanders came to Richmond, California because he saw the vision that RPA had. What we've created in Richmond is something called community. And so many of us in America, especially here in California where we've got nine million people in the greater Bay Area, we know television characters better than we know our neighbors. What we're attempting to do through this conference and through our work nationwide is to build an election integrity community, folks. We want a national map where people who want to be involved in the election integrity movement can come, click on their state, find John Brakey in Arizona. If you were in Arizona, wouldn't you want to know John Brakey? If you're living in San Diego, wouldn't you want to be working with Ray Lutz with cops? If you're here in the Bay Area, we want you working with us with Ballots for Bernie and for, with VRTF. We want to plug people in all over the country to this movement. And with your help, we can grow this movement. But folks, I'm a community organizer, and that means going back to our roots as human beings, as hunter-gatherers. I need people to hunt funders for us. I need people to gather volunteers for us. I am not ashamed to say, oh, I can't do it alone. We can't do it alone in this room. We need to build an election integrity army. Folks, thanks for coming and being here today. Thanks for being here for this conference. And with your help, we can do this. Thank you again. Um, in a word, wow. <laughs> this has been great. I want to thank Manny for yes, being here Manny. as a moderator and Bob. Bob yeah. I want to thank all of our donors. I want to thank our speakers. I want to thank all of you for hanging out here so long and showing up. I, this last hour was to be something of where do we go for here. I'm going to have to cut that very short, but there's going to be some, a couple comments and so on. One, um, community organizing. A few weeks ago, there appeared a group on, the, on Facebook and so called secureourvote.us. And really, for the first time, we have been look secure our vote.us. We have been trying to connect with people who really know how to organize nationally. And this may be it. I, I, they're new, so there's going to be some hiccups, but I, I, I did a little of research into what they're doing. And it looks like these people have an idea of what they're doing. They are affiliated with Common Cause. So this is big. It can grow to be big. 
and they want to set you up, you go sign on and say, I want to have a secure revoke group in my community. So I suggest you go there, check it out. If you like what you see, sign up. And maybe we can, that can be part of a large national community. On Facebook, you will still find Voting Rights Task Force. If you search for it, there's a California page, there's a US page, depending on how you want to fit in, and then there's just a journal. Um, there are groups, California and US groups, and then there's the Facebook Voting Rights Task Force page, which is where the video is coming up. We will be putting up some announcements about follow-up. Also look down at nbrtf.org from time to time, or contact us and we will somehow get you on an initial mailing list. I think what we're going to do, and I wanted to have more of a, a longer conversation, maybe afterwards we can talk, but I'm gonna contact our speakers and invite them in on a, a couple of conference calls, video chats, and try to figure out where we go from here. We don't wanna just do this conference and drop it. And we have a, I'm honored to have these speakers here. And I think we will start there and talk about where we go from here and then we'll get back to the larger community and let you know and then hopefully we can build something stronger from this conference. You will find in a couple of weeks on YouTube videos uh, by searching for California in Election Integrity Network, the videos from this conference. They'll, no? CEIC, California Election Integrity Coalition. Uh, California Election Integrity Coalition, I'm sorry. Mm. We have so many groups flying around here. <laughs> A couple of tips uh, for activists. One, if you want to convince your registrars to do hand counting in precincts or ballot images and so on, there's a bunch of little elections going on. Convince them to experiment there and try things out before they go big time. Right, Virginia? Right. Yeah, this is. Go find them, talk to your registrars, and, and use those. You can go look for a very good place if you like RCV and proportional representation. Look for the topic, electoral systems, in Wikipedia, and start there, and then just roll up your sleeves and spend a couple of days. Californians should know we have a unique situation where you can, if you can convince a civil grand jury to start investigating elections, they have subpoena power. And I talked to a judge once and I said, can a civil grand jury tell a community or a city what to do? And he said, yeah. So if you smell something not so good, think about approaching a civil grand jury in your community and see what you can do. Um, I would hope that from this morning, with the conversation we had with Bill Quirk, that we, you saw we set it up that we're gonna have a civil, respectful conversation. Yeah. It works. <laughs> your legislators, your election officials are not the enemy, most of them. They're not the enemy. <laughs> There's a couple, you know, I mean, any group, there's a couple, but go treat them with respect and civility and you will get a lot further than if you go in there pounding on the door and insulting them and calling them names. It doesn't work, it backfires. backfires. Um, to any candidates out there, if your election is close, do not concede on election night. John Kerry made that mistake and we paid for it. A uh, couple more comments. One, there is no silver bullet. Audits alone will not do it. Open source alone will not do it. 
hand counted paper ballots, there are countries that do it and do it successfully, but they have one or two items on the ballot. In San Francisco, we had 50. Again, start with the smaller elections and then expand and maybe something can be worked out. But there is no silver bullet. There's 20, there's 100 gaps in this entire electoral process and we have to start plugging them up one at a time. This will take years. I've been at it for 12. Some of us have been at it for a lot longer. This is for the long haul. This is for democracy. A little bit of perspective. Uh, I had a friend, a Tunisian, who during the, shortly during the Arab Spring, he called, up, called me up, he lives in the Bay Area, and he said the Tunisian government called him up and asked him if he would be precinct captain for San Francisco, which covered the entire north, the west coast, and from, from Washington, even Canada, the people could come in and vote in their first ever election. And we talked a bit, and I said, when is this? In a week. <laughs> he was not joking. The government had found a location, but he had to set everything else up, and they got the ballots and the ballot boxes the day before. They pulled it off. But it was put some real perspective on things. Among other things, in that country there were the old regime that they overthrew and the Islamists that wanted the election to fail. So that put a whole bunch of extra security issues in there. We see a lot of variation just among our states. I hope maybe next year we can have some people from other countries to provide some more perspective on this because there's a lot of ways to do elections. But this was really eye-opening and we had them over for a meeting a couple weeks later and that was the best meeting we ever had. But he asked me, Jim, should I do this? My answer was, People died for that election. They literally died for that election. Yeah, do it. And that leaves me almost done here, but Eleanor Roosevelt had a wartime prayer during World War II. I'm not particularly religious, but the sentiment is there. Dear Lord, lest I continue my complacent way, help me to remember that somewhere, somehow, out there, a man died for me today. As long as there be war, then I must ask and answer, am I worth dying for? And finally, quote President Josiah Bartlett of West Wing, Decisions are made by those who show up. Thank you for showing up. <laughs>